Imagine a blueprint, a step-by-step -step guide, a case study where we peel back the curtains and show you what it takes to sell on Amazon. Welcome to the Million Dollar Case Study. Now that our product is live on Amazon, we're in the very crucial stage of getting those initial sales and reviews. We've set up our first advertising campaigns, and now today, we're going to look into what it takes to make them more profitable. To help me do this, I have a special guest today from the Jungle Scout team. Jake Zaratsian has over three years of experience advertising on Amazon and has worked with a wide range of clients from household name brands to small local businesses, helping them to grow their sales and profitability. So he's the perfect person to have on today's episode. So Jake, welcome. Thanks for thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm uh, I'm excited to talk PPC. So let's dive right into it. We've got our PPC campaigns set up and we want to optimize them. Jake, tell me what's our first steps? Yeah, so before you begin optimizing, let's start first by explaining one of the most important metrics you need to know in order to monitor the health of your PPC campaigns. And this is known as your ACOS, or Advertising Cost of Sales, which measures the efficiency of your campaigns using the following formula, total ad spend divided by total ad sales. So for example, if you spent $30 on advertising and sold $300 worth of goods, your ACOS would be 10%. In general, a lower ACOS is more desirable than a higher ACOS because that means you're spending less dollars to generate the same amount of revenue. The good thing is, is that on Amazon, you don't actually need to calculate your ACOS as this is done automatically for you in the campaign manager. Although one of the first steps that you should take before you begin advertising is to figure out what's called your breakeven ACOS. Your breakeven ACOS is a benchmark that represents the tipping point between profit or loss of a particular campaign. So essentially your breakeven ACOS allows you to see immediately whether or not your campaigns are helping you make or lose money. To find your breakeven ACOS, it's important to first understand what your profit per unit is. Put simply, profit per unit is calculated by subtracting your product sales price by the total landed cost to make and ship your product into Amazon, plus your Amazon fees. Once you've done that, you simply divide that number by your product sales price which will then give you your break-even ACOS. So let's now do this with our P pads. All right, so I'm gonna do this with the intended selling price, which is $29.99. I am actually selling it lower at the moment. As I mentioned in the last episode, I'm selling it at a lower price because there's no reviews and I'm just trying to get some traction. But I'm gonna use a demonstration of the, the price that I'm intending to sell it at. So now subtracting the cost of goods, the shipping, and the FBA fees from that selling price leaves us with $9.54 in profit per unit. So that means that we can spend up to $9.54 in order to get a sale and still be profitable. Now to determine our break-even ACOS, we simply divide our profit by the selling price, which then leaves us with a 32% ACOS. That means that we make money on any advertising campaign that has an ACOS of 32% or less. So now we know what ACOS we're aiming for in order to stay profitable while advertising. However, keep in mind that in the first month or so, as I mentioned, it's expensive expected to be higher than our break-even ACOS until we make campaign optimizations, which is the topic for the remainder of this episode. So let's now dive into all the ways that you can optimize your advertising campaigns. Do you believe in off Amazon advertising? I do. I believe that it's a great place to, to go once you've mastered on Amazon advertising. So taking advantage of the internal traffic and what Amazon has to offer internally, I think is a great place to, to really know more about your audience, to know more about what they're searching for. And then, you know, you can layer on outside traffic and advertising, of course, because there's infinite potential with outside traffic. There's so many resources out there. There's so many, even like freelancers you can hire to write up captions or you can hire a photographer to take these photos or videographers for video. There's the 
opportunities are endless. And then there's Facebook groups that can support you in that kind of thing. And it's something you do catch on quick. If you know what I mean, if that is something that interests you, I definitely say go for it. Oh yeah. Oh hell yeah. So what's funny is whenever I advertise on Facebook for my own store, there's this halo effect with my Amazon listings as well. And I think what's happening is some people just prefer to buy on Amazon and they, they'd rather not shop on a boutique, right? And so they'll find the ad, they'll click on it, they'll end up on the boutique, but then they'll be like, hey, you know, maybe I'll just look on Amazon to see if it's there because I like Amazon Prime. And so even if you're driving outside traffic to your own store, it's probably gonna have a halo effect on Amazon sales as well. I think once you, your product is, you know, decently successful, you're, you're getting consistent sales, um, every day or every month is when you can start to um, drive some outside traffic. I don't think it's really necessary at the beginning or a smart thing to do because, you know, you could be just throwing money randomly at, at something that you're not sure is working. Yeah, it's important for everyone. And it doesn't matter if you don't have experience. I mean, everyone has to start somewhere. You have to learn it. So yes, I think that everyone should be doing that. And you don't, it doesn't mean that you have to do everything. You know, pick one or two things, um, depending on who your audience is. And that's why it's very important to understand who it is that you're selling to. And so once you discover who this audience is, you can say, okay, well, now that I know um, my target audience are, you know, uh, let's say females ages 18 to 25, I'm going to be spending my time on Instagram because that's the demographic of Instagram. So I'm going to focus my marketing on learning how to do Instagram marketing, uh, working with influencers on Instagram, doing Instagram paid advertising. So you don't have to do all, you don't have to do everything, but figure out who your audience is and discover where are they spending their free time. Or if you don't want to learn how to do the marketing, then hire someone to do it for you. All right, Jake, so which campaign should we optimize first? Yeah, so the first campaign we want to optimize is our automatic campaign. Okay. And the reason we optimize this campaign first, it goes back to the original purpose of this campaign. Remember, we set up a manual campaign targeting our keywords. However, this automatic campaign is set up to target the keywords that we aren't already aware of and don't have in our manual campaigns. We do this because Amazon knows better than us which keyword shoppers type into the search bar and then end up purchasing our product. Yeah, that makes a, a lot of sense. So essentially an automatic campaign is like casting out a net into the water and seeing what it brings back, right? Exactly, yeah. And to keep the analogy going, mm -hmm. uh, what we can do with that automatic campaign is we're able to then pull back the net and see exactly what worked well and what didn't work well. From there, we can then add the profitable keywords into our manual campaign as well as negate the unprofitable keywords from the automatic campaign. Awesome, I think that sounds like a great plan. What do you say we, we get started? Yeah, let's get started. So to begin optimizing, we first need to analyze how our keywords are performing. And on Amazon, we do that by viewing a search term report. As of now, there's two ways that you can view a search term report. The first way is by downloading a CSV file and opening it up in a software like Excel where you can then use filters and formulas to narrow down exactly what you're looking for. To download this report, if you're already in the campaign manager, you simply go over to the sidebar and select reports, and then click on create report. Or if you're on the Seller Central homepage, you can access this page by hovering over the reports tab and selecting advertising reports. From here, make sure you have sponsored product selected from the campaign type and search term selected from the report type. Lastly, you can change the reporting period to whatever date range you'd like. However, keep in mind that Amazon only allows you to go back about 65 days to view your search terms. So it's very important that you make sure to download a report each 65 days or so, so that you don't lose that important data. One trick I recommend is to automate your reports to download for you each month so that you never forget to do it. To do that, simply set your reporting period to last month and then scroll down to the bottom to the page and select recurring under the scheduled time section. Lastly, set your frequency to monthly and then make sure to set your end date for as far into the future as possible so that it doesn't end. Then click schedule report. Okay, that sounds great. But what if you don't have Excel or you just don't like spreadsheets? Is there another way that you can view this data? Absolutely, yeah. The second way of viewing your search terms doesn't require Excel and in my opinion, is a bit more streamlined and easier to work with. 
In this way, you can view your search terms by going into a campaign's ad group, then clicking on the search terms tab. Here you can utilize these same columns as you would if you exported the data into Excel, which you can do from here as well. And you can also adjust the date range, which is really helpful because you can simply just do it here without having to reset the range and download another report. So far, the PPAD advertising campaigns uh, seem to be going really well. However, they've only been running kind of a couple of days at this point. So there's not really enough data there to analyze, or at least I don't wanna be making any changes just yet. So today, let's check out the Jungle Slider and the Jungle Sticks campaigns. So what steps do we need to take in order to begin optimizing uh, our first campaign? Yeah, so when we're in the search term report, we have a three-step optimization process that we'll want to follow. The first step is to isolate the keywords that we've spent a good amount of money on, but have not converted into sales. And then we'll add those to our negative keywords list. The second step is to isolate the keywords that we have converted into profitable sales, and then we'll add those to our keyword list. Lastly, in the third step, we'll add all of the keywords we just added to our list to each of our manual campaigns. And then we'll also add all of our negative keywords into the automatic campaign. Does that sound like a good plan? Yeah, that sounds great. Let's do it. All righty. So let's go ahead and jump into our portfolio, the Jungle Slider Black campaign here. Mm -hmm. And we'll go ahead and click into the campaign. And so to access the search term report, we're in the campaign settings view, but let's go to the ad group settings view. Gotcha. And then search terms right here. Okay, so to isolate the keywords that are spending a lot without sales, yep. what we'll do is we'll actually look through the keywords that have at least 10 clicks. Right. Okay, yeah, so at Jungle Scout, a general rule of thumb is to isolate the keywords with 10 or less clicks because on Amazon, the average conversion rate is about 10%. So if a particular keyword has over 10 clicks without a sale, that's a pretty clear indicator that we'll wanna negate that keyword and avoid spending on it further. So let's go ahead and do that. And okay. we can actually just use these filters over here and click clicks and then yep. go greater than or equal to 10 to isolate all of the keywords on this list with at least 10 clicks. And then now to bring in the keywords that have no sales with mm -hmm. 10 clicks, we'll actually bring in another filter. And we can do that by choosing the sales filter and choosing less than or equal to zero sales. Right. And now we have a list of keywords, about seven of them with 10 or more clicks and no sales. Gotcha. Yeah, so again, just painting a picture, we're paying every time someone clicks on this search term. And if we've had 10 clicks already, nobody's actually made a sale, then we're potentially just wasting money. And so that's what we're looking at here. Absolutely. Yeah, and we can see here the spend, we can sort by spend by clicking the spend column. We see the ones that we've spent the most on. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is a great idea to begin uh, finding the keywords that we wanna optimize or on a gate. So we have our, our list here, we've got seven results back and Remember, we're in an automatic campaign, so this is where Amazon is choosing which search terms to appear on. If we look at the keyword or the, the search terms that we have here, desk extender, keyboard stand, under desk drawer, they do seem pretty relevant to our product. Uh, however, of course, the data is showing us that we're not getting many sales from them. Sometimes you might see search terms here that are really irrelevant to your product and you clearly want to negate them. In our case, a lot of these do seem pretty relevant for our product, but the data is showing us that they're not converting. So that's why we're looking at them at the moment. But one thing I have noticed here is that there are actually two ASINs. So, uh, quick question here for you, Jake. Are people actually searching for that ASIN? No, people are not searching for this ASIN. That is a common question, but typically what's happening here is Amazon is showing our ad on these competitors product pages, and they're hoping that they're gonna convert from one product to the other. Mm -hmm. And these ads typically live in the middle of the page on a section called products related to this item right here. So while this didn't work for these two ASINs, typically this strategy does work and so at the end of this video, we'll actually come back and look at the data with the keywords with sales, and then we'll actually launch some product targeting campaigns. 
So for now, let's go ahead and go back to the search term report and we'll take these keywords and add them to our list. So there's a few ways that you could go about this. We're just copying it into a Google document or you could utilize keyword lists inside of Jungle Scout and you could create a list for your negative performers and then in our next step, we're also gonna look at our top performers and you could create a separate list for that one. But the important thing is just to isolate these into their own list. All right, well, we just added all of our keywords that we now wanna negate from this campaign to this okay. list. So now we have our keywords that we wanna to add to our negative keywords list. Okay. And to do that, let's just copy the keywords here and only the keywords. Okay. And we'll go over to this negative targeting tab here and then click add negative keywords. You will see that we have an option to add negative products, which we'll get to right after this. Okay. So we'll do that and copy them here. And you'll also see that we could have negated the phrase, but we're nice. gonna avoid doing that. Um, the reason we do that is because we wanna give these keywords a chance to still serve on Amazon with keywords added before, in the middle, or after. Yep. Okay, that makes sense to me. So we'll add those and now those terms will not be advertised on in this campaign moving forward. Correct. Yep, so we're telling Amazon to never again show our ad when these keywords are typed into the search bar. Okay. All right, now let's go back to our keyword list and take the two ASINs that we identified that weren't working and now go over to the negative products tab here. Great. So we'll add those here and click exclude and then add negative product targets. Okay, so that covers our first step with this campaign of negating our negative performers. Yeah, absolutely. Now on to step two of the process, which will go back to the search term report and now isolate the keywords that have sales and are also profitable for us. So we're looking at the opposite this time. We're looking for the ones like our winning keywords or winning terms. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And this is where we're gonna utilize our break even ACOS here. Okay. So let's get rid of the clicks filter. And instead of zero sales, we now wanna find the keywords that we do have sales on. So we'll go greater than or equal to zero. Next, this is where we bring okay. in our break even ACOS. So we'll, Great. we wanna find our any keywords that have less than or equal to our break-even ACOS, which is 27%, and we'll click- For our sliders, yep. Great. So here we have a list of 21 keywords that we have a sale on mm -hmm. and are also profitable for us because they're under our 27% break-even ACOS. So from here, this is where we want to grab these keywords here or ASINs and yep. then add them to our keyword list because at the end, we're gonna come back and add them to our manual campaigns. Right, and so really the, the thinking here is that, again, inside of the automatic campaign, Amazon is making all the decisions of what it's targeting. But because we're seeing that these are doing so well, we want more manual control over these keywords and ASINs. So that's why we're pulling them out of the automatic campaign and putting them in manual campaigns, because we have a lot more uh, options when it comes to controlling those campaigns. Is that how you describe it? Exactly. And then we can increase our bid as well so that we're bidding right. for it a little bit more than what our automatic campaign is doing. Right. Yeah. Okay. So to do that here, and we have a lot of ASINs here, so we will at the end of this video make sure to launch a product targeting campaign with these ASINs since they're very profitable. But right now, let's just grab the keywords so really every product will be different. Sometimes you'll see a lot of keywords here. Sometimes you might see more ASINs, such as in our case. Okay, so we grab the keywords. Now let's grab our ASINs. If you had dozens or hundreds of keywords or ASINs here, you could also export this as a CSV file and then copy them all at once from there as an alternative. Okay, great. So now we've got all of our top performer keywords in our keyword list is the next step for us to then add that, uh, add all those to our manual campaign? Yes, but we'll hold off on doing that now because okay. we're actually going to do the same process with our manual campaigns. So we'll wait till the very end when we complete that and add more keywords to our list, and then we'll add those at the very end. Great, so the next place that we can optimize an automatic campaign is actually this targeting tab up here. 
And so what targeting means with an automatic campaign mm -hmm. is this is where we get a little sneak peek into where Amazon is displaying our ad against searches. You'll notice that there's four targeting groups here. There's close match, substitutes, complements, and loose match. However, only two of these are related to keywords, and that's close match and loose match. And the other two, substitutes and complements, those are related to product ASINs, much like the ASINs we saw in our search term report. So to explain these targeting groups, let's pretend, for example, we're selling a red apple. Okay. And so if we have a red apple, a close match search term would be red apple, or even organic red apple, because that is a term that is closely related to the product we are selling. An example of a loose match keyword would be if a customer typed in green apple, for example. While we're still selling an apple and they're looking for an apple, they typed in the color green, and this would be an example of a loose match keyword. An example of a substitute would be if Amazon showed our ad on a product for an orange or even a strawberry, because while it's still a fruit, it's not exactly what we're selling. So it is a substitute for the apple. An example of a compliment would be if Amazon showed our ad on a listing for caramel dip, for example, because this is actually a product that people pair together at the checkout and Amazon knows that, so they may show our ad for the apple with the caramel dip. What was that? Was that a caramel dip you were referring to? <laughs> yeah, I say caramel dip. Um, it's probably caramel dip. I don't know. I Let's, uh, how about you guys? Let us know in the comments. How do you pronounce? Is it caramel or? Caramel. Yeah, let us know. Okay, cool. So from these four options here, in your experience working with a lot of campaigns, do you tend to find that any of these tend to be more successful than others? Yes, and it's funny because they're right at the top here. So close okay. match and substitutes tend to be the more profitable for you because they're more right. so like what the customer is actually searching for. With compliments, however, it is you see it's only spending 137 here, but it's converted only one sale. And with mm. loose match, because that's a loosely related term, it's not exactly what the customer is looking for. We tend to not see that much performance here, although it's not horrible at 63%. Yeah, so we can clearly see here that compliments is by far the lowest performer as it's got the highest ACoS. It's spending more than the actual cost of the product to acquire a sale. So I guess when we're looking at this now, we've, I guess we've really got a couple of options. We can either change the bid or we can actually just turn off that entire targeting group. What would you say is our approach here? Yeah, so we can do kind of one or both for each. So with compliments, like you said, we've spent $137 here and mm -hmm. we've only converted one sale. I might suggest we actually just pause that targeting group. Yeah. But with loose match, we're not too far off here and I would probably suggest just lowering our bid here. So if we want to do that, we would just turn off the compliments tab here. And then what are you thinking here? We could actually go to the suggested bid. Yeah. Which would be 85. Or we could even lower it. Um, but you just want to stay here at the suggested bid? Yeah, I'd say maybe the suggested bid. Would you have any sort of rules of thumb of when you would turn it off versus just lowering the bid? Yes, so if it does look exactly how the compliments data looks, where our ACoS is now closer to 200%, that might be a warning and that would tell us to then pause it. But in this case, we're not too far off mm -hmm. um, from competing with the substitutes and even the close match ACoS. So I would be curious to see what happens once we lower our bid here and see if we can really get that ACoS down to closer to 40 or 50%. Okay, great. Okay, so we've adjusted the bid on loose match and now we'll go away and wait and see, you know, how that affects the ACoS at the end of the day. In terms of the other two, we've got close match and substitutes. Those are performing well, at least relative to the complements, but I do notice that they're around about 60%. So that is higher than our uh, break-even ACoS. So how, how should we be thinking about this? Should we lower the bid a little bit more or like what are some of the things we can be thinking about when we're trying to make this decision? Yeah, so we would lower the bid here if we're spending at a rate that we're happy with. And you can okay. see here, we're spending less than $100 a day, but that's a very healthy amount. And yep. because we're above the break-even ACoS, like you said, 
uh, a pretty good amount, almost double our break even ACOS here. I would probably look to lower this bid a little bit, maybe down to $1.50, just below the highest end of the bidding range. And then that way we can come back in a couple of weeks to see if our ACOS is lower. And hopefully we're still spending as much as we're spending or just a little bit lower than $95 a day. Right. So the thinking here is that, you know, typically when you reduce your bid, you're, you're not going to be bidding that amount, but that also means that you're not going to win as many ad auctions. So overall, you might end up spending less and just appearing less. Exactly. So we don't want to lower it so much that our spend drops significantly, but you're saying that at $95 a day, we can still cut back the spend. We can afford to cut back the spend a little bit, but maybe in doing so, we'll be more profitable at a lower ACOS. Exactly. Where Great. we wouldn't do that is if we were only spending 10 to $20 a day and we mm. weren't hitting our maximum budget, then we would be happy with the amount that we're winning right now yep. and not look to pull it back anymore and just rely on our search terms and adding negative keywords as a way to bring our ACOS down. Um, but because we're spending a pretty good amount right now, I would say let's just maybe lower our bids a little bit here. Okay, that sounds yeah. like a plan. So we're going to lower them a little bit. And as just a general rule of thumb, you can use the bid range that's given there. So what is that? Around about that dollar fifty mark or yeah, dollar fifty four is the highest that someone has won a bid uh, in close match in the last, I think it's 14 days. So Okay. If we want to, we could go just right at that bid range or maybe just right below it. Okay, maybe just below it then. Yeah, a dollar and 50 cents. And then for substitutes, we could do the same thing here. What are we thinking? $2.20? Yeah, I think that sounds good. Just below the highest end of the bid range there. Great. Okay, great. All right, yeah, so that's how you optimize your targeting section for an automatic campaign. Now, the last place that we can optimize an automatic campaign is actually on the campaign level view. And okay. if we go back to the campaign at the top here, it will actually be in campaign settings. This is where we can update our title, our portfolio, our budget, and then our campaign bidding strategies as well as our placements. So we just saw that we spent about $95 per day, which is fine. Our mm -hmm. budget is great right now, so I wouldn't adjust that at all. Okay. Where we can adjust our bidding strategy is in the bidding strategy section, as well as the placement strategy section. So we're at down only right now, which I would recommend keeping on because yep. our ACOS is already twice of our uh, break-even ACOS. Yes, we don't want Amazon to be bidding higher than, than that amount. Exactly. And so what I would do now is look at our placements with the placements tab up here. This tells us where Amazon is serving our ads and how successful each placement is. We have two placements that we can adjust for. That's the top of search, which appears on the first page of search results, and then product pages, which is like the ASINs that we showed you on the competitor products and the products related to this item section. And so just looking at the data here, it looks pretty even with 61% ACoS and 51% ACoS. However, the majority of our sales are coming from these product pages, like we saw in the search term report. So I wouldn't recommend really doing much here. It's pretty good. You'd only want to adjust your bidding here for each placement if you saw that one of these strat one of these placements was significantly lower than the other. Okay. So let's say that the top of search was like 200% ACOS. Yeah. The other one was at say 40% or performing much better. Is that the, the situation you all? Exactly. And what we'd be doing in that case, if one of these were lower than the other significantly, is sort of telling Amazon, hint, hint, we would like if you showed our product ad on one of these placements over the other. And so how would you go about making that adjustment? Yeah, so you just type it right into here and you can actually go up to 900% of your default bid. But keep in mind your bidding strategy here. We were down only, so it won't affect us much here. But if you are up and down, this placement here, for example, if we were to type in 100% bid up, then Amazon would then take our default bid, add 100% to it, so from a dollar, for example, to $2. And then when you go up and down, you can actually increase that by another 100%. Okay. So it could potentially go from a dollar to $2 to $3 
which can get very expensive very fast. Okay, so you're really just optimizing the one that's performing well. You can't really do anything to negate or turn off the one that's poorly performing. Is that right? Exactly. Yes. Okay. So this is only for bidding upwards if one of these over the other was performing significantly better. All right, so now we've optimized our automatic campaign and we're gonna move on to the manual campaign. Jake, would you say that the process is gonna be the same for the manual campaign? Yes, the process is the exact same, except this time, instead of a targeting group section, we actually are gonna deal with keywords this time because we're in a manual campaign. All right, let's take a look at uh, what that's gonna look like. All right, so let's find this campaign here, the manual campaign, the jungle slider. And then let's go ahead and go into the broad match ad group here, and then into the search terms. Great, just as before. Yep, and then to find the keywords again that we have at least 10 clicks on and zero sales, we'll mm -hmm. grab the filter here, clicks, greater than or equal to 10. Great. And then we have a short list here, so we probably don't need to add the sales filter. Um, right. We can just work off of this here. So this is a pretty short list here, but what we could do is actually minimize our clicks to five to 10 clicks. Mm -hmm. It would give us more data to work with, and it would just be up to us whether we want to continue with those keywords or if we want to negate them, uh, thinking that they're gonna eventually be up to 10 clicks in the future. Yeah, that's a really good point. And something to, to mention with all of the the filters and rules of thumb that we're suggesting is that it's a great starting point, but do feel free to kind of play with those numbers and then make your best judgment. So I agree, I think like more than 10 clicks is definitely a, a great point to negate them at, but yeah, let's uh, take a look at five to 10 now and, yeah. and see what sort of things come up. Great, so we'll just go ahead and remove 10, go five. So we went from okay. yeah four to 14 keywords here. Now let's just sort by spend so that we can see the highest spending Okay. first. Yeah, so right away you see under dusk storage. That's right. probably not applicable to our product, but we could search this on Amazon and see what it's showing up for. Yeah, that sounds like a, a good strategy. I, I think you're probably right that, yeah, immediately under desk storage if I imagine someone that's typing that in, I don't think they're after a keyboard tray, but a good thing to do just to double check that is to kind of search for it. This is what I would typically imagine is under desk storage. I don't think, yeah, they're going to be looking for something uh, to put your keyboard tray on. So yeah, already I feel like, okay, that's probably an irrelevant one. If we move down the list, Okay, these are pretty good, the first, the next two. Okay. Underdust shelf might be very similar to underdust storage. Yep, I agree. Same with underdust organizer. And that only has eight clicks, but again, we can probably predict that if we don't negate this now, that'll probably be 10 clicks in the future. Yeah, that's where it's like, if it was something that felt a lot more relevant for your product, it had had eight clicks or seven or eight clicks, and yet it hadn't had a sale, that's where you kind of have to use your best judgment of, is this one gonna pick up and, and turn things around and start producing sales? Or do you feel like it's probably gonna continue on that trend of clicks but no sales? So in this case, I think it's a little bit easier to decide because it doesn't feel relevant. Right. So I would probably add that to the negative list as well. Okay, and while we're here, in a manual campaign, you can actually negate a lot faster than you can in an automatic campaign. So you'll notice over here to the far left, we have this new column that lets us in bulk select all the keywords. But in this case, we only want to choose the keywords that we know we want to add to our negative targeting list. Great. So what we can do, just as an example, we can click this and actually add as a negative keyword right from here instead of adding them to our list and then coming back to add them to our negative targeting list. So we said we were gonna negate this term and this term. And the under desk storage at the top. Under desk storage at the top. Scroll down just a little bit here. Computer tray under desk. Yeah, that's computer tray under desk. 
That's a little bit of a tricky one because I'm try I'm not exactly sure what they're searching for. Yeah. That might be worth look us looking up here. Yeah. Computer tray under desk. So that does look very similar to the yeah. spider. Okay, yeah, it definitely, I'm getting the impression that a keyboard slider or our keyboard slider tray could fit into this sort of category. And so what numbers is that getting? It's like eight clicks, eight clicks, no sales. So this is definitely like one of those co that could go either way. Mm. Let's just say for now, we'll leave that one. And then next okay. time we perform an optimization, if it's hit that 10 mark with s still no sales, then we might uh, call it a day at that point. Something else to keep in mind here is if you see this column right here, which is key the keywords column, this is telling us what the root cause of this search term is. So for example, under desk storage, we got that in our search term report because we're bidding on under desk in broad match. Right, and so remembering that broad match means that it will take that initial keyword you're bidding on and then it could add keywords before, after, in between, just making all sorts of different combinations. So you can see bidding on under desk, they've just added the word storage, and then just all sorts of variations of that. Yeah, and it's in here a lot. So when mm. we're optimizing our keywords after this, we may want to look at under desk and see how it's performing as a keyword, yep. because right now it's not doing so well, doing so well in our search term report. Would you say that the reason we would look at adjusting the actual keyword itself is because there are so many search terms coming back that are perhaps not relevant. Whereas if it was only one or two search terms, maybe we only want to negate the search term and not necessarily touch the keyword. Absolutely. So we have a few examples of that here actually. So under desk didn't do well for under desk storage, mm -hmm. but under desk did do pretty well for under desk tray, for example, with a 13% right. A cost. So yeah, we may not want to negate or pause the under desk keyword, but we may just want to, like you said, negate the keyword in exact match for the ones that aren't performing well for our keyword. Yeah, so I guess like the question that we're trying to answer here is whether everything that under desk creates is, uh, you know, not going to be relevant or not going to perform well, or whether it's just maybe particular terms. Right. Yeah, and we can just go ahead and add these as negatives straight from here, Yep, which is great. So let's see, are there any other keywords here that we may want to stop before they eventually do reach their 10 clicks? What's that CPU stand under desk? CPU stand under desk, yeah. That most likely is referring to something that would hold your computer up, so we can probably add that as well. Yeah, I'd say so. You've got under desk mount, that one actually is doing all right, five clicks, one order, so I'd, yeah. I'd probably let that one keep going. Under desk cable management tray, mm. it's that's doesn't really sound like the, the product, so I'd maybe uh, cut that one off right now as well, even though it's only had five clicks, but it doesn't seem relevant. Yeah. Mouse tray under desk, I guess that could probably fit with our keyboards as well as your might be using your mouse as well as your keyboard. Yeah. Okay. So I think maybe we've got the the main sort of culprits there that uh, we feel aren't performing that well or mightn't in the future. Yeah. And so right here, we can actually just negate our keyword without having to copy them to our list and then coming back. Okay. So to do that, we actually just come right up here to add as negative keyword. And then again, we're only gonna be adding the negative exact versions of these keywords since we know that these are the keywords that aren't performing well for us. So Great. let's go to add negative keywords. And just to check that it went through, you can actually go to the tab up here and you can see those five keywords that we just negated right here. All right, well, now that we've added our negative keywords, let's go back to the search term report. All right. And this time, let's find the keywords that we are converting on sales and mm -hmm. they're profitable. So to do that, we'll grab actually the sales filter here, greater than or equal to one. And mm -hmm. then with our break-even ACOS, let's do less than or equal to 27. Great. 
Awesome. So we have a list here of 15 search terms. And all of these search terms here are within our break-even ACOS. However, this is where we can utilize this column over here called added as. Okay. And this is essentially telling us really quickly at a glance whether we have all of these keywords in our campaign already. So it's really helpful that we can just look at this list and say, okay, we do have this keyword here added, but this one, for example, and all of these aren't added into our campaign. So we can just copy those and add them to our list outside of just copying every single keyword. Great, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and copy these keywords over to our list. So we just added all of our keywords to this list, and now we have a pretty big list to work with. Mm -hmm. But we're not done yet with adding to this list. We're actually going to go back to our phrase match ad group and add more with the same process of going through our search term report and adding these keywords. So before we leave this ad group, let's actually now go over to the targeting tab. And this is where we get to play with our keywords and see which ones are performing well and which ones aren't. So this one does look a little bit different, whereas in the automatic campaign, remember, we only had the four different targeting groups. Yeah. This is looking a little bit different. What are we seeing here? Yeah, so we're basically seeing the keywords that fall under those targeting groups. If you remember back with the close match and loose match, those were relating to keywords. However, with substitutes and complements, because we're in a keyword targeting campaign, we're not going to see those here. But if we did set up a product targeting campaign, then we would see ASINs in this section. So now we're just looking at the keywords, which we have about 30 and we're currently sorting it by spend to see our highest spenders first. And I guess that's where we can look at our break-even ACOS and determine whether we want to now pause the keyword, whether we want to increase our bid or decrease our bid. All right, now once we're here, very similar to the search term report, we can actually use these filters over here. And we'll do this first to now find the keywords that have at least 10 clicks right. and that don't have sales, or if this, they do have sales, maybe they're not profitable sales. Right. So doing 10 there for clicks. And we have about eight keywords here. And so I guess we could probably just work from this page here. Yeah. If you had pages and pages, then you would want to add the sales filter to kind of narrow it down. But yeah. like you said, we can view it all from here. So exactly. let's see what we're working with. And so what we're really looking for now is, are there any keywords that we should be pausing? Or are there any keywords here that we should be lowering their bid? And looking at the ACOSs here, we may want to lower the bid for most of them as they're a little bit higher than our break-even ACOS, which is okay. We're still getting some sales, but we could just lower our bid here to hopefully be more profitable in the future. All right, so looking at the keywords that we've got here, first up, the three down the bottom have had a lot of clicks and no sales. Yeah. So I feel like those definitely need to be optimized as they're costing us a lot of money with no results. As we look at the top ones, these have all had sales, but they vary in terms of the ACOS. You see under desk keyboard tray around about 35%. That's like pretty close to our break even ACOS. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. I'd say the same thing for desk keyboard trade, about 40%. I feel like that one is okay. The other ones there, they do seem a little bit high, you know, again, over double our break-even ACOS. So I feel like those would be good to optimize as well. So how do we go about doing that, Jake? Yeah, so we can bring in one of the columns here, suggested bid, and this will tell us where our bid currently is in relation to the suggested bid, as well as the max and the lowest end of the bid range. So for example, for under desk here, we are at 153 and our ACOS is close to 70%, and the yeah. suggested bid is a dollar and three cents. So we are at the top of that bid range, and mm -hmm. I would say we could lower our bid closer to the suggested bid range to hope to get our ACOS down to a better level. So if we want to do that, we can either lower the bid ourselves, yep. or we could actually just click apply here, which will give us a suggested bid, and maybe we just slightly go over to a dollar and five cents. Now, okay. looking at this keyword here that you said that we, we are pretty close to our break-even ACOS, the 35% ACOS here for Underdesk keyboard tray. We're sort of above the suggested bid range and close to the max. And I would say we actually leave that there uh, since, yep. like you said, we're pretty happy with our results right now. Coming down here to this keyword, keyboard trays with a 72% ACOS, we're 
Very similar to the last keyword, we're in the higher end of the bid range, but our yep. ACOS is almost double. So very similar to under desk, we might want to stick closer to the suggested bid range here. Okay. We can click apply there and maybe just go up a little bit. Next, we have desk keyboard here, which is again, closer to the higher end of the bid range at $1.32. So again, we may just want to get it closer to the suggested bid. We'll probably keep this one here, desk keyboard tray at 40% ACOS. Yep. It is a little bit high, and hopefully with the other optimizations we've made to the account, that this will help it perform better, or that it will perform better in the future. Great, so what do you suggest for the bottom ones that haven't gotten any sales? Are we still gonna adjust the bid, or is there a different type of action that you'd suggest with these? Yes, so here we have no sales at all, and this is a broad match keyword, so it's not even helping us convert any sales with keywords added before, after, even, even in the middle. So mm. we may look to actually pause this campaign unless we want to give it one more chance and just bring it down to the lowest end of the bid range, which would yep. be 60 cents. So this is definitely one of those areas that you should use your own discretion and determine whether you want to continue bidding for clamp desk, for example, and go to the lower, lowest end of the bid range or just get rid of it altogether. So what yeah. are you thinking we do here? Looking at these, particularly like the clamp desk that's had 34 clicks and no conversions, that feels like maybe it's worth just shutting off entirely. Maybe when it comes to under desk keyboard, trays for desk. I'm also now trying to think about how relevant I feel they are. Yeah, I do agree. I think turning off clamp desk would make a lot of sense here given the 34 clicks that we have, as well as maybe it's not the most relevant to the slider. Yeah. So let's go ahead and pause that keyword. Okay. And for under desk keyboard, that is pretty relevant. Yeah. So maybe for under desk keyboard, and then let's see, trays for desk. Trays for desk, I'm trying to think if that's really relevant. People are probably, oh, I mean, it is a tray, it's a keyboard tray, but are, are people trying to, I feel like maybe I'd need to see what trays for desk is on, on yeah. Amazon. Let's go ahead and look that up real quick. That's what I was thinking as well, is they may be for your cable management, they may be yeah. trays to organize things on your desk, so this may be something that we maybe wanna stop now before it continues to increase. Yeah, I think I'd agree, let's, let's turn that one off. Let's turn that one off, okay. And then lastly, maybe we just drop the bid down for under desk keyboard. Yeah, let's bring it down to the closest or to the lowest end of the bid range. Maybe go 55. Yep. So we're still maybe bidding on it, but hopefully, hopefully we'll get a sell now that we're at the bottom of the bid range. Right. So would you say as you're changing these bids, I'm getting the feeling that there's not necessarily an absolute rule of thumb in terms of a certain percentage that you should drop or a certain amount or anything like that. Uh, it seems like the suggested bid range does give you some of those guidelines, but is that what you would say is that there's no hard and fast rule as to how much you drop it generally? Exactly, especially if you have a keyword that does have sales. Yep. then you may want to refer back to the search term report to see which sales that keyword generated for. And perhaps you're just taking that keyword and adding it to your campaign and then just keeping a close eye on that keyword in your campaign and in the future, if you see it still uh, be unprofitable, then that's when you would negate it. But I would definitely say use your own discretion. There's no hard and fast rule here, but 10 clicks based off of the rule that on Amazon, you have a 10% conversion rate on average. Mm -hmm. That's what we tend to use. Right. It's typically, it typically works out. Let's move on to the next step and find the sort of top performance. Alrighty, so we'll remove our filter here. And again, just like the search term report, we're mm -hmm. going to add the sales filter. So we'll do greater than or equal to one. Great. And then okay. typically you would include your break-even ACOS in here as well, like we did earlier, but we know that none of our keywords here fit within that break-even ACOS. So we've actually got the same data we were just looking at, 
but for you that may not be the case. So this is generally the best filter set to look at. Yeah, and so what we could do here is we could filter by sales just to get the highest sellers at the top. And going back to this keyword here, underdesk keyword tray with a 35% ACoS, while it's not in our break even ACoS range or lower, we we're pretty happy with the results here. So what do you think? Yeah. Do we increase our bid here or keep it at the higher end of the bid range, which it's already at? Yeah, I mean, we could experiment with increasing it a little bit. Yeah. Like you said, out of this list, it is one of the, the top performers or the top performer. So typically that's the, the question you wanna ask when you're finding these top performers is, you know, do you think you can uh, increase that success by increasing the bid? So let's perhaps try that. Yeah, I agree. So let's go ahead and put it just above the maximum bid range, dollar and seventy-five. And for the keyword over here, uh, with forty percent ACOS desk keyword tray, we're in a very similar boat here, mm. where we are currently at the higher end of the bid range, but we're not at the very top of the bid range. So we're certainly losing some clicks here, or losing some impressions here. Yeah. So shall we do the same strategy? Increase it toward the top of the bid range? I think so. Yeah. Let's okay. try that. Let's do that. So. Let's go to a dollar and 80 cents here. Great. Well, now we just adjusted the keywords that were performing well to hopefully serve more impressions on them. One thing to keep in mind is that there are different strategies or different reasons to be running or optimizing your PPC. If you're purely trying to be profitable, then you might have a hard and fast rule of, I want my ACoS to be under my break even of 27%. In this case, I'm happy for us to push that a little bit because I know that the more sales we get through these keywords, the more that's gonna help our organic ranking and over time, we'll hopefully get more organic sort of free sales from that. So I'm sort of investing into building my organic search ranking, which is one of the secondary sort of effects of PPC advertising other than just getting the sales themselves. So with that in mind, that's why I'm okay with pushing that ACoS up a little bit higher. So now that we've added more keywords to our list with the search term report and also adjusted our targeting list here, let's now go back and do the exact same process for our phrase and exact match ad groups and then we'll come back at the very end and add all of the keywords to our campaigns. Great, now that we've done the exact same process to all the ad groups, let's go ahead now and take our master keyword list and add all of them to all of our ad groups. Let's all right, see. so how do you go about that? Yes, so let's go to the phrase match ad group first. And then to add a keyword, you're gonna go back to our keyword targeting list in the targeting tab here, and then click add keywords. Then we're gonna click enter list and grab our keywords. Copy these keywords over here. And then copy the rest of our keywords as well. That's annoying. Right here. And then because we're in the phrase match campaign, let's make sure to uncheck the broad and exact match boxes and click add keywords. And okay, here's a great example of four out of 17 keywords don't have a suggested bid for them. You can still bid on this keyword, but most okay. likely there's not a lot of search volume for these keywords in okay. phrase match. So maybe that's just, what do you think here? Like a dollar 50? Yeah, I think that sounds good. Okay, we'll add those keywords. And now we're adding 17 phrase match keywords. So click save, and those were added. Now let's go back and add the same keywords to our other ad group. We'll click targeting, add keywords, enter list, and then grab those keywords here. Great. And then because this is the broad ad group, let's take away phrase and exact match and just add broad. And the same thing, but only two this time. And then click save. Perfect. Great.
Great, well now we just added all of our keywords from our master list to all of our ad groups. So now, just like the automatic campaign, let's jump out of the ad group level and into the campaign level and update our campaign settings. So here is where we can change again our budget, our bidding strategy, and our placements. However, I think we're fine with our budget right now. And our bidding strategy is set to down only, which I think is pretty okay given our ACOS is already above our break even. But you would want to change this to up and down if your ACOS was pretty low and right around or lower than your break even ACOS, or if you weren't hitting your budget consistently. So because we're going to keep it at down only, let's now head over to the placements tab and see where Amazon is placing our ads. And so we can see a pretty clear trend here that top of search isn't performing nearly as well as product pages. But I wouldn't recommend adding any bid adjustment here since they're both above our break even ACOS. Right, so on this particular page, you can't decrease the bid, you can mm. only increase. So really we're just looking for areas that are already performing well, we can't really do any optimization to the poorly performing areas. Is exactly. Right? In, a, in a perfect world, we would decrease the bid adjustment for top of search, but unfortunately we can't do that. All right, now the last step to optimize our campaigns is to actually take that keyword list that we created earlier and add all of those keywords as negative keywords to our automatic campaign. And the reason we do that is because now that we're taking those keywords out of our automatic campaign and into our manual campaign, we wanna make sure that our automatic campaign is no longer spending on those keywords so that our manual campaigns can focus on them. So going back to our analogy earlier, really just view your automatic campaigns like that fishnet that's going out to find new keyword opportunities. And then when it finds those really great ones, we're moving them into the manual campaigns where we have a lot more control and then letting the automatic continue to find us more opportunities like that. Yeah, and so to go about doing that, let's go back to our automatic campaign, which we started with earlier. All right, so let's go into our campaign here. Then negative targeting add negative keywords, and then let's go back to our keyword list that we added earlier. Take just the keywords. So now we've added those keywords into our negative targeting list in our automatic campaign so that we're letting our manual campaign bid on them rather than having them both bid on them. So that covers our three-step optimization process for both automatic and manual campaigns. So now let's maybe shift gears and talk about some new campaign types. Are there any others that you've tried in the past that you quite like? Yeah, absolutely. If you remember back earlier to the automatic campaign search term report, we found a ton of ASINs that were converting sales for us mm. and they were very profitable. So now what we can do is take the ASINs that we found in our automatic search term report and target those in product targeting campaigns. And we already put those down here. so we could copy those ASINs and then just add them right to a new campaign. Okay, let's set up one of these campaigns. Yeah, so to do that, let's go back to our campaign manager and click create campaign. And just like the keyword campaigns, these are gonna be sponsored products. Okay. Jungle slider, product targeting. Yep. Great, and then we'll add it to our portfolio. Black. Oh, missed it, okay. Great, and then we'll just use the same $30 a day budget. Great. Choose manual targeting here. Okay. We'll keep the campaign bidding strategy at the default here. Yep. And then copy our campaign name in the ad group. And then here we have to find our product. And then coming down into this targeting section, this is where we see keyword targeting as well as product targeting. So earlier we were doing keyword targeting, right? but now let's toggle to product targeting and you'll see this section down here has changed. So we could do categories or you can do individual products, which is what we're gonna do now. So Amazon does suggest some products to target. However, because we know our list already, much like the keywords, we're gonna enter a list here and then go back to our keyword list and copy those ASINs that we found in our search term report and then paste those here. We'll go ahead and click target. 
And then come down here and you'll see we have 16 products that we're targeting. Now we have the bid set to our default. So at the top here, we can click apply all and it will apply all of the suggested bids to each of these products. Great, and now once we applied all of our suggested bids, we can come down here and you can actually exclude brands and you can negate them or you can even negate certain products. But because we're not doing that, we're just gonna come down here and launch our campaign. And much like the keyword campaigns, we actually wanna take our bids and increase them by about 25% to give us a better chance of displaying our ad. So now to increase our bids in bulk, what we can do is click into the ad group here and then click into the targeting tab. Select this box at the very top, which will select all of the ASINs that we've just added and then click adjust bid. And because we're doing a percentage increase, let's mm -hmm. actually go increase bid by percentage. And then we said we could do 25% and then click save. And now all of our bids were just adjusted by an increase of 25%, giving us a lot better chance now to serve our ad on these products listings pages. Cool, well, that's a really great campaign idea. I do love the ability to be able to target specific ASINs, so you can be targeting competitors. We were really lucky that we had so much great ASIN data in our search term report, but another popular way for creating a product targeting campaign is to find competitors that are perhaps priced higher than you because there's a good chance that if you're advertising on their specific pages that people will click onto your listing because it's cheaper. So that's one other idea for finding competitor ASINs for this type of campaign. Just like we did with the keywords that we added to the manual campaign, let's now take these ASINs and add them as negative products to our automatic campaign. So there you have it. We've optimized our automatic campaign, our manual campaign, and launched a product targeting campaign. Now over to you. What's your break-even ACOS? Are you willing to go over at the beginning or is that just a crazy idea? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you've gotten some value from this episode, then please hit that thumbs up button down below to let us know. Now, remember, if you're following along and wanting to build your own Amazon business, then I'd recommend you join the Million Dollar Case Study Challenge. The first steps are joining our private Facebook group. Each week, you receive action items so that you can follow along and be building your own business. The link is in the description. Also visit Jungle Scout if you'd like to see how our leading all-in-one platform can help you sell on Amazon. We have an array of tools from helping you find a product all the way to managing your business. If you'd like to see Jungle Scout in action, then check out the link in the description for a free live demo. In the final episode of the Million Dollar Case Study, we're going to cover the journey so far, the wins, failures, and lessons learned. We're also going to talk about how to maintain and then scale your business so you're set up for a successful business into the future. I'll see you then. So really, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> what am I trying to say? So we can click edit campaign, which it didn't work. <laughs> so that we're only serving for, oh, I should have stopped there. <laughs> <laughs> there was a point where like, yeah. like I should have stopped, but then, you know, I kept going.